ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Kerrigan. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Um. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome to Witch Talk. My name is Kerrigan, and here we are again with another amazing show for you with a very special guest, because the guest today um, is someone that was on Witch Talk a few... Um, I don't even know how long are we doing this, but it was a long time ago, and, um, and it's absolutely amazing. He wrote two amazing books, unique books, and when I say unique, it's really unique, and um, he's going to talk about not only those two, but he's going to talk about a third and, um, and reveal some other uh, very impressing future works. So... That's one of the things that I really am very excited about. But let me just um, tell you about um, things connected with Witch Talk. One of them is that, uh, and I have to show you this, uh, we have someone uh, on our website that actually she is... Um, uh, earring impaired and her name is Virginia and she wants someone to actually um, volunteer if there is anybody that are listening to us um, to have uh, transcribed the shows because there are two hour shows right it's a lot of uh, transcribing but we are seeking for volunteers to transcribe them and to actually do um, subtitles of our shows for the hearing impaired people that are listening or wanted to wanted to uh, not listen but wanted to read the captures um, the subtitles on the show so they really want to enjoy the show but the only the only uh, way they can do it it, is if there is anybody that would help us um, doing subtitles for the show and then they can see it and then they can read it as um, they are seeing it on you know on the web so if you are uh, or if you do have that possibility if you are out there and if you don't mind to volunteer to do the subtitles for the shows uh, we will appreciate that you would call uh, contact me on which talk uh, and you can you can contact me on Carrigan dot witch at gmail dot com or you can contact us on witch talk show at gmail dot com uh, if you want to volunteer about this so this is very very important because um, there's a lot of people uh, out there that really really want this and uh, that would be absolutely amazing um, another thing that I wanted to show you uh, is Logios. Logios is our sponsor, and this is the website. It's an absolutely amazing um, published company, and um, they uh, actually have the Redbird. The Redbird is actually what we—it's uh, the producer of these shows, um, and you know, uh, it's the—it's the, the machine behind all of this. Uh, Indigo is our producer, Indigo Estrella, uh, that works uh, on Redbird, and Redbird is Logios Publishing branch that produces all the multimedia uh, content for Logios, being it a CD or a DVD or a movie or, or a promotional clip or even you know Witch Talk. So Witch Talk is um, is 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 done uh, by Redbird and it's also uh, sponsored by Logios Publishing. Um, so just check them out, Logios Publishing, www.logios.biz, and I'm sure that you will love it. Witch Talk uh, is also um, um, uh, re a, po a podcast, so every time that we do a show, we will record it and we will have it on sound so that you will enjoy it uh, on iTunes. So you can just go on witchtalk.buzzsprout.com and you can enjoy that also. Don't forget our website, www.witchtalkshow.com. And from there, you can just, you know, uh, access everything from the radio podcast to um, which reads to everything, Facebook page, Twitter, um, all of that. Uh, also, we are not taking any, uh, I mean, we're, we're not um, taking any money out of this. So, and we do have 
uh, some expenses uh, in the production. So it would be really, really wonderful if you could uh, purchase some of our um, apparel from our website. So if you go to our website, which which www.witchtalkshow.com, you can you know access the apparel. But you can also go to www.zazzle.com/witchtalk, and you can just buy a t-shirt and help us out that will be really really great so um, that said and that showed <laughs> now I'm going to um, let's let's just listen of uh, about all of it and how you can contact us on which talk here we go so you want to know how to keep in touch with everything witch talk Go to www.witchtalkshow.com and follow all the latest news. Listen directly to the show and enjoy it. If you're on the move, take Witch Talk with you by subscribing to our Witch Talk podcast on iTunes or by following us on Buzzsprout Witch Talk site by going to witchtalkbuzzsprout.com. Don't forget to join us on Ustream Crowd. Go to www.ustream.tv slash channel slash witchtalk dash show. Miss the show? Don't worry. Every show will be recorded and available for you to watch or listen both in Ustream and Buzzsprout. Witch Talk will air every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or approximately 9 p.m. in most Europe. Now live in video, watch us on Ustream. Follow us on Twitter at Carrigan, K-H-A-R-A-G-A-N with an H after the K. Or send us an email at witchtalkshow at gmail.com. Now back to the show. And back to the show it is. Here we are again. Um, one of the things, I don't know, uh, for some reason I'm very nostalgic today. So um, I, I was thinking on the other day, I mean, you know, through the whole weekend, how many people did I interview on all, all of this time? And, and how many people shared with me and with all of us their stories? And how many people were so generous and continue to be generous to really, really... Um, share with us their life stories, their experiences, their wisdom, um, their knowledge. It's just an amazing thing. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, I'm really, really lucky to have this show and, and to have people listening to it and to have people that really come forth and, and share with, with us all you know their wisdom it's absolutely amazing and I, I'm really grateful for so for all of you who gave me the opportunity of listening to you and and give us all the opportunity to have your words of wisdom and knowledge spread all over the internet um, thank you very 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 much now that said let's go to uh, Witch Reads with Indigo Estrella and she's bringing a very interesting book today let's see what it is <laughs> Witches talk about which books witches read. With Indigo Estrella. Witch reads. Hello, Indigo. Hi, Kerrigan. How are you? I'm very nostalgic today. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I did. That yeah. was very nice. Yeah, well, you know, you you think about these things, you know? Yeah. And, and I was looking at all of the books that, you know, people send us and all of the things that they said and all of the hours and hours and hours of, of, of conversation that we had. And it's absolutely amazing, you know? It's absolutely amazing. And you do have to acknowledge that. I mean, you do have to acknowledge these people and you do have to acknowledge all of them. And they're they're really really huge ter- generosity, you know, on yeah. doing this, and it's absolutely yeah. amazing. I just love it. So let's talk about let's go on witch reads because this is okay. Really, <laughs> it's we're fun. going to begin I to cry. I completely agree. I mean, these pe- yeah. these people can't, they come on the show. They're not being paid for this. They're no, just no, sharing no. their passion it's and they're just, sharing their craft. They're opening up their lives, really, yeah, especially yeah. when you start to talk about you know what brought them to their ways. Yeah, and it's exactly. it's really incredible. I know, I know. I I just love it. I just love it. So, okay, let's go on Witch Reads. What do you bring 
for us today? Today, I bring verses. Uh, it's subtitled A Duality of Conflict in Magic, Mythology, and Paganism, edited by Kim Huggins and published by Avalonia Books. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. I just it love is, this book. The cover art is fantastic. Emily Carding did it again. Um, the, the title is Polarity, and on the left, there's the sun with its bright, shining golden <sighs> rays, and on the right, there's the moon with these beautiful blue like moon rays, and a person in the middle with its arms outstretched upwards, and a rainbow of color coming up out of its head, a star on its forehead, a yin-yang on the heart with rays coming out of it and the moon right there in the sacral area. It's really beautiful. And if you it's notice, incredible. if you would notice, the, the figure on white is a, a male and the figure on uh, black is a female. But on the side of the male, there's the moon and on the side of the female, there's the sun. Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely amazing. I mean, the, Emily Carding, we love you, Emily. <laughs> um, Emily is just yeah. amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's it's really really good. So um, one of the things that I wanted to really really say um, before we go ahead is that there is someone that um, this this book is is it's a collection of essays basically. That's what it is, and it's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. But there is one of my friends and. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing high priestess Diane Champigny is mm -hmm. is a friend of mine and she wrote an essay for this particular book and it's absolutely amazing I just um, I really love it and um, you know sometimes she does um, things on on other books for um, Avalonian books and she really is a, a huge contributor of, of um, of of things, you know, she she does a lot of uh, other books with Avalonia books, um, but you know, I really loved this one, um, and it was uh, one of them that I really really liked about, you know, was this one and yeah, the polarity magic and yeah. not not necessarily sex magic, but polarity magic. Polarity magic, and uh, I really loved it, and you know, I know, I know, I know, I might be kind of like pulling my own, you know. <laughs> But a little hey, bit biased, perhaps. Yes. Hey, <laughs> it's my show, so you know what I mean. <laughs> and I can actually do that. So it's it's really it, <laughs> it's really really nice, and 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 it's I just love it. I really do. I'm I'm trying to find it out. Oh, okay. Plurian magic. It's at page two twelve. Yes, 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 yes. yes. If you do have, have it. the book, it's a short one, but it's so. It's beautiful. very short. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only about uh, about two, three and a half pages. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. It is, it is. But it's very well done. It's very beautiful. It's about the sea priestess also and moon magic. So I, I really love that. So um, you can't disagree with me, do you? Well, I'm not going to completely disagree with you. I okay. thought it was a really, really good and very short um, essay. It wasn't one of my favorites, though. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Diane. It was it was very well done. There were other um, Diane, other essays Diane, I like. I like to leave. Diane, just don't listen yeah. to her. It's yeah, don't listen to me. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. My, my my opinions. It's not just my opinion. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but it's really it's a good it's well written. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah. not one of my favorites. It wasn't okay. the standout for me so, personally. Let, let's go to the book uh, okay. in general. So okay. what what is this about? So well, you, you just said obviously it's about polarity, but um, do you really not necessarily polarity? Yeah, it's okay. duality. So the book duality. explores okay. the dynamics of duality. Mm -hmm. So the opposing forces, um, twins, marriages, uh, it just a variety of. Um, Characters you can find throughout mythology, uh, mm -hmm. practices in modern magic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all exploring duality. Mm -hmm. So it's really fantastic. You know, for example, Emily Carding has a great, um, a great uh, essay called Sun and Moon, mm -hmm. and it's a perspective on polarity and its role in the tarot. So she explores the tarot and all of its different um, symbolism with polarity and um, duality and talking about the different symbolism you can find throughout the tarot that best um, describes the, the, the deeper meanings of duality. It's really, really interesting. One of the, one of the, I don't know if you know, I mean, th these compilations of essays are absolutely amazing and I do think that there is nowhere else that you can get that better than from Avalonian books. They no, really, I agree. They really do a absolutely fantastic job um and 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 kim just did just an amazing job on this one now 
Um, one of my favorites, I don't know if you agree with me, it's Gods of Light and Darkness by yes. Michael Howard. Yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely one of my favorite so essays. It's called Gods it's of Light and Darkness, Dualism in Modern Traditional Witchcraft. So this is yes. one of the texts that you can look for in, in this book. And it's absolutely amazing. Well, Michael, it, it, Michael is really good. I mean, I just love everything he does, but um, he writes. Um, but it's a very, it's not really small. It's an extensive yeah. And I like that. Because for, yeah. for me, I, I prefer the longer essays because the, mm. the author tends to get more in detail yes. and provides a lot of examples, um, ha goes into more uh, combinations of relationships and the interplays and the, the similarities and the differences, but yet they're still combined in that, that duality. It's very interesting. Um, for those who are listening and they don't know what modern traditional witchcraft is, that's not modern Wicca. Yes, that's not, not modern American. traditional Wicca. Yeah. This is modern traditional witchcraft, similar to, uh, I know we recently had Peter Patton on the show, talked about, um, you know, that that's the kind of traditional witchcraft, where it's, you know, the pillars of Tubal Cain and going through the symbolism of, uh, you know, Lilith and Lucifer and the, the more, um, the, the darker figures of the Old Testament, I would, I would say. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah, well, I think so. But um, the thing is that Michael is really uh, traditional witchcraft. You know, there's a lot of things about these nomenclatures that are so tricky. Yes. Traditional <laughs> witchcraft, traditional witchcraft, um, it's really not Wicca. Um, and what we would call Wicca. And then we have Wicca, which is, you know, Gardner and, and Alexandrian. And then we have Neo Wicca, which is, you know, all of those fantastic things like Dianic Wicca uh, and, you know, and Starhawk and the Scott uh, Cunningham and Wicca. Cunningham and, 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 you know, we're not putting everybody on the same. No, way. there's actually an essay about that um, mm -hmm. neo paganism written by John Hanna. It's in this book. Yeah. Exoteric neo paganism and it explores yeah. morality in uh, the the polarities in Wicca. John right. Anna is another one that I really really love. I mean, he's yeah. absolutely amazing, and he has his a text of his own. Um, do you remember that text that he wrote about uh, Wicca, modern something Wicca? It's yes, it's yes. He actually is, sent me he actually sent me a copy to be reviewed, and it's absolutely huge. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing, and I'm really looking forward to that one because he's really, really good. John Anna, everyone. Yeah. So, um, okay, so what is extraordinary about this book? Well, the thing that's amazing about this book is the variety of essays. So you could, for example, we're talking about this essay by Michael Howard about mm -hmm. uh, modern traditional witchcraft, mm -hmm. and just before that, um, Tristan M. Brownwin talks about the tale of the twins, and, you know, twin symbology throughout mythology, and then, you know, it goes through in, the duality in fairy tales, constellations, uh, talking about, you know, Perseus and Andromeda, and um, then it continues on with Inanna and Arishkagal and the Sumerian myths of duality, and it goes through the Greek myths of duality with um, Hephaestus and Ares, you know, what, what their roles are, and then we have um, the Norse myth of, well not myth, but the, the Norse figures of Frigga and Freya, and if they actually are the same person, mm -hmm. or if they are similar but separate. Yeah. It, it's very, very interesting. Um, I just the, love the variety. this variety is just, just fantastic. It. Yeah, I love this book because I think that it's absolutely, um, and and there is this thing about you know, oh, is it about polarity? No, it's a, it's not really. It's about not. It. And you know, I actually I thought that when I first picked it up, especially because of the cover. Yes. I forgot me. Um, and I thought it would be about polarity, so I guess I I, I didn't. I, I came into this book with preconceived notion, which is something I very rarely do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I was a bit shocked that most of the essays don't really focus as much on polarity as they do on um, duality. Figures, duality. Mm, yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there, there's a big difference in that because when I think of polarity, I think of opposing but similar forces. Um, one duality of the things, what, one of the is things, different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. One of the things that people really don't um, acknowledge a lot, it's the, I mean, I don't know why, but the introduction or the preface... Oh, book. and it's so good in this book. <laughs> I know, but people don't really even care about, oh, it's the introduction, I'm just going ahead and, you know, go ahead and, and read the book. 
it's absolutely amazing in this book. So, you know, when you buy this book, and you can buy it on www.avalonianbooks.com or .co.uk, you can actually, um, I mean, just read every single word because it's absolutely amazing. It's really good. And I'm it's not really saying good. this because I just, you know, I just like <laughs> it. I'm saying this because it's absolutely, you know, I can't tell you, I can tell you how much people don't have an idea of what duality is or polarity is or whatever. This book is absolutely amazing on that and can really, really gives you a lot of perspectives from a lot of people that really mm -hmm. know the subject. You know, <laughs> and from a variety of different sources yes, too. It's not yeah. it's not just a, a study of duality in a certain tradition, no. or a, you know, a study of duality within a certain you know box. This goes mm -hmm. it, from voodoo to the Norse traditions to Sumer and mm -hmm. Sumerian traditions mm -hmm. to and everything in the, in between. Absolutely. It's really incredible. Um, it's really really good. I mean, it's a it's an anthology, so you're going to have some essays that are better than others. And, you know, as we've already established, that can depend on the person. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, but I, I thought overall it was a very good book, and I would recommend it. Absolutely. Definitely. So how many cauldrons are we talking about on this one? I'll give it four cauldrons. It's a very good book. <laughs> I know someone that will really be very happy. <laughs> Good. Well, With this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's the truth, though, and that's very good, especially for an anthology. You know, it's absolutely um, right. I've read other anthologies that there have been a few essays that I felt kind of dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, this this book is very well done. The anthology, the the essays within the anthology are really well um, well written. Um, the the way that the essays are kind of placed within the book. Yeah. I have a big question mark because it it kind of. It didn't flow, and I think I've said that before from one of Kim's mm. um, anthologies. Mm. It didn't really flow the way that I, I thought it, it could have, mm -hmm. um, but the the essays themselves were really, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so you would not, you would not, um, I mean, your problem is with the architecture of the of the compilation. Is that what you're saying? Well, that, yeah, that's one of my problems. There's, mm -hmm. some, there's some other personal preferences. You know, some essays I didn't really... Like eh. no, yeah. Well, for example, mm. I'm going to pick, point out a name, and I apologize to the author. I don't really see why the Voodoo Mariage by Sophia Fisher yeah. was in there. It was really, really short, and it didn't really have much content. It seemed a bit out of place in the book. Mm -hmm. um, it, what that is is it's it's the marriage between a spirit and um, a voodoo practitioner. Oh, and I understand the duality, but it just it didn't really. It didn't really make sense for me. Okay. Yeah. When placed in is this that book. really yeah yeah is that really duality is that really well duality? it is it is duality because there's a marriage happening. Yeah. But and, but it's it, it, it was it, it just didn't really make <laughs> much sense. Well for me. yeah yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's just one. But um yeah, yeah. The, the the architecture of the book it, it you know at times there would be for example two essays about Inanna. And a rich girl and the descent into the underworld in return, um, they were placed right next to each other. And yes. then there were other times when there were similar um, subjects that were placed essays away from each other. So what is your constructive critique on this architecture placement? Do you um, think that Kim should be, you know, she, 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 she should, you know, have that in consideration, not putting two very similar things beside each other? What, what do you think that would well, be? Well, when it comes to that, for me personally, I can't help but critique the two essays together because I just finished with one essay about Inanna and Arishkigal, and then I'm beginning another one. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't want to have to compare the two. I'd like to just, you know, add two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've had enough time to process that, that one essay about Inanna and then continue on to, like, for example, you know, an essay about neo-paganism or, mm -hmm. or, you know, the Norse um, essay by Katie Gerard, and then continue on with Inanna. That mm -hmm. way I've had time for it to really sink in and not just, like, Absolutely. Yeah. power forward. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Now, uh, let me just take a little a little pause here because I, I really wanted to welcome everybody on the chat room. We have Master Nestor here. Uh, we have Wolfbrand, Daniel is always here, uh, Dragvant is here, and also Confrey Girl, 
uh, it's here. So I just uh, I just wanted to welcome everybody on the chat room, and they're they're saying you know very nice things about Avalonia makes great books, and uh, Kim is also yeah. a great there's, editor. There's some and, very interesting conversation. Yeah, I know. Uh, one, one of our listeners recently had a birthday this week, so he's drinking yeah. some Ron Jeremy rum. Oh really? Oh hi Danielle. <laughs> yes. Hi Danielle. <laughs> She's saying hi Kerrigan. Hi Danielle. So it's it's um it's it's uh which one is it? Um, D Regiment. Oh wow! Okay, yep. D Reg, D Reg, what? Who's who's it? D D, D, Reg, D Regiment. D Regiment. Okay, okay. So <laughs> hi, hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to, you know, sometimes I don't really look at this chat room. Um, hey, hey, <laughs> everybody <laughs> said hi, hi, hi. Um, I just don't look because I, I really am focused on 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 the technical aspect. Well, you do have so much that's going on I know, I technically. Know. I, ju I just wanted to actually really well happy birthday D Reg 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 Vant. It's really hard for me to pronounce <laughs> okay. the name. Um, so okay, so this is this is well have a ball, have a ball. You have to have a ball. So that's that's your birthday. Is it it's birthday birthday, right? Birthday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was his birthday on the eighteenth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let's go back to um, let's go back to um, the the book now. Uh, four cauldrons for versus. Right? Yes. yes. Absolutely amazing cover for uh, from Emily Carding. Yes, kudos Emily. Fantastic cover. The and and you know Kim, you she did a wonderful job yeah. um, editing the book. It just the architecture of the book. I I don't really understand, but that's okay. Yeah. If it works for her, it works for her. That's just my that's my opinion. This is my review. That's what I have to say. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, when it comes to the other, the, the essays in, in general, they're all amazing. You know, really there's uh, yeah. Catherine Sutherland, Su yeah, Sutherland um, wrote an essay about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely in a play of duality. I mean, that's probably the most obvious in the British Isles I can think of, mm -hmm. the interplay of duality. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic articles all around. Kim actually wrote a, um, an essay about the Marasa, which are the, the divine twins, mm -hmm. the spirits mm -hmm. of voodoo. Um, and it's very, it's very interesting. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the whole book, it's, it's a wonderful, um, <laughs> it's a wonderful exploration of the topic of duality while looking at many different forms of magic and many different varieties of mythology, yes, and how how you know it can range from extremely traditional, um, and going back thousands of years to Sumer and ancient Greece to the very modern times about modern paganism and uh, the 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 modern constructs with graves and the Oak King and the Holly King. So it's yeah. it's very interesting. It's it's like a, a great little introduction to the variety of oh, pagan you might let me just meet. Say, let me just say, <laughs> Let me just say that uh, Holy King, uh, O King, uh, uh, let me just say um, uh, uh, the Farars, right? Um, yeah. Because, because we have to, well, well uh, we have to, you know, say that and acknowledge well, that. Well, she, she acknowledged that Stuart Farrar. Yeah, Stuart, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he invented the Holy King, O King. So we should, we should give him credit where it's due. There is um. something <laughs> about the pronunciation of this Farrar. I don't know if it is Farrar, Farrar. Um, I don't either. I, I don't I, know. I remember that. I'm American, oh. so I'm, I'm known to mispronounce a lot J of Janet, things. Janet, Janet, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I know that probably you're hearing this and you're you're slapping me, but you taught me that it was not really, I don't know what it was, uh, if it was Farrar that you didn't like or if it was Farrar. Uh, anyway, but, it, you know, we're just acknowledging that that was actually a creation from Stuart and you. And that's what it's important. Yes, we should give him credit where it's mm, due. Absolutely. So, so it's a great book. It'll it'll give you a nice variety of the the witches you might encounter throughout. You know, if you go to a, a pagan festival mm -hmm. or you know a traditional gathering, this is a, a great kind of like study of the various paths mm -hmm. through the, the topic of duality. Yeah, which is absolutely amazing. Yes. And, you know, we need we need books like this. We need more books like this. Um, Avalonian Books uh, is always working in something very interesting. And, yes, and always. Always. <laughs> it's just like, 
you know, it's like the chocolate factory. You know, yeah. there's always these kinds of very nice things that you really sip and 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 chew, and it's and just you know, this amazing. you might not like all the different forms of chocolate that come out, but it's Absolutely. still chocolate, it's, and you know, it, it's still gonna be at least sweet. Good chocolate. <laughs> it's good yeah. chocolate for the mind and and you know and the soul. So yeah. it's absolutely amazing. Um, well done, Avalon in books, and well done, Kim. Um, you know, for this fantastic book, and everybody else that it really. I really want to acknowledge everyone in the book. Let me just say, okay, because I really want to. <laughs> yeah, you know, Vicky Bronshaw, <laughs> okay, yeah. Trish M. Bronwyn, Emily Carding, uh, Frada Jonathan Carfax, Diane Champigny, Thea. Uh, Creasy uh, Derbyshire, Ra Ra Rachel Donaldson, Sophia Fisher, Guy Gaunt, Gareth Jarrett, Katie Jarrett, John Anna, Melissa Harrison, Ali Horn, Michael Howard, Kim H Huggins, um, I I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it not correctly, but you know, Payan Na Nabars, uh, Sophie Newsley. Uh, Karen Pierce, Margin, Margin Rose, and Kathleen Sutherland. So I just wanted to know. I wanted to pay, you know, um, you know, to to yeah. tell every every single author that it's on this book because it's really, really, and you know, obviously edited by Kim, Kim uh, Hungers. Um, but it's just an amazing book that I think that everyone should have, and um, in their libraries. Yeah. So four cauldrons. Four on cauldrons. Very highly means. recommended. Okay. Any any last words for this book? Yes, I wanted to give a special shout out to Sophie Nusle Falco. Yes, um, she had a fantastic uh, essay about uh, Inanna and Abishkigal, and it was actually written while she was serving in Iraq. So it, she was actually in the the land of Sumer as she was writing this article. That's very interesting. And it was very interesting, very um, insightful. It, you know, out of all of the the essays, I think that was the most one of the most personal um, because it, it's it's written um, and, and you can tell that she's she's having a, a deeply spiritual experience. Yes, yes. You know, and, and I, that's I just Sophie. Wanted, that's Sophie. Yeah, that's you know? Sophie. Or Sophie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's she's she's like that. She's a, she's she really has profound spiritual things. Yeah, she does. I'm, I'm a friend on Facebook, yes. and it's it's very she interesting. She really does, so and and I uh, yeah. I wanted to give a special shout out for for that particular essay because it was really um, I have no intentions on going to the Middle East, so I kind of I'm living vicariously through this essay, and it it's very very um, special. It's yeah. a special essay because of that. And I just want to say thank you specifically to Sophie because it was very, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophie Nusley, Inanna and the Irish Shekal. Um, this is one of the verses, uh, essays that you can find on this fantastic book by Avalonia Books, www.avaloniabooks.co.uk or .com as you prefer. Um, amazing review from uh, Indigo Australia. Thank you so much, Indigo, for being here and to share your vision with us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, you're going to uh, stay on uh, the chat room, right? Oh, of course. I wouldn't miss this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to to go to the guest now, and, and that's what I'm asking you. Uh, if oh, you're yes. Staying. I'll be in the chat room. I'll be monitoring the chat, talking with everyone. If they have questions, Okay. they need to register for Ustream, and I'll be able to just take the questions from the chat and ask you to ask uh, our guests. Well, uh, one of the things I wanted to just very briefly to explain to everybody, what is the difference between you being registered um, or not, and how can you register? You can register with your Facebook account, right? Yeah, I'm registered through my Facebook account. Yeah. Um, the, the guests, they'll only be able to monitor the chat and listen live, uh, but if they're registered, and it's, it's a spam-free thing, I mean... I'm I'm the moderator of the chat room and I don't even get any messages from Ustream. Um so it's spam free, it's really quick, really easy, and you know, you'll be able to join in on the chat, ask questions, um, have special commentary in the chat if you want. Um, yeah. it's it's really, really good and it's really fantastic to get more insight from the authors that yeah. we have on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have a burning question, make sure that 
you uh, you register and, and join in the fun. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, Indigo, for being here and for uh, sharing this with us. Thank you. Thanks, Kerrigan. Thank see you, you next week. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 And that was um, Indigo Estrella with uh, this wonderful review about Versus, uh, edited by Kim Ergens. And uh, it's an Avalonian book. Um, absolutely amazing, wonderful cover by uh, Emily Carding. Again, shout, shout, shout. Uh, wonderful, wonderful um, uh, uh essay. Uh, it's a compilation of essays, but again, an, a wonderful essay uh, a, a called Inanna and the Erishikal uh, by Sophie Nusley. So here we are. Um, a wonderful book for have uh, to, for you to have and in, in, in your library. Now let's um, go right away and make the introduction of our guest because I can't wait to uh, talk to him uh, and uh, we're going to just listen to the introduction and then we're going to talk to him. Here we go. Mark Smith is a writer and a practitioner of traditional witchcraft. Through his entire life he has been a dedicated student of the goddess of witchcraft Hecate. Primal Craft is the foundation through which he is able to assist others who wish to walk the path of the Dark Queen. Though he was at that time unaware of her true identity, his connection to the Witch Flame Goddess goes far back as he can remember. There were others who came with Ecate during those infant years, but they remained in the background at that time. It is with the Queen of Hell that he has always had the strongest connection. This was the beginning of his true reawakening, in this incarnation at least. As he grew and his horizon expanded, so too did his practice of the ancient craft. There were obviously times when this focus would shift, as required, to various aspects of the mundane life, such is the necessary balance of the incarnated form. The Red King is the second volume of the Trident of Witchcraft, this substantial book reveals the true gnosis of Lucifer as the god who ain't dates the entire Christian mythos, which has been suppressed and hidden from man by organizations such as the Catholic Church for thousands of years. In the age of reawakening, Lucifer steps forward as the light barrier who illuminates the way of true wisdom and understanding. He is the god who holds the key of this incarnate form of man. The magical work of Lucifer is the catalyst through which the power of Gnosis of the Witch Gods may attain by those who are able to balance the blackest Atlantean magic with the brightest stellar aspects of the perfect Red King. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest today on Witch Talk, Mark Allen Smith. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm really, really happy that we have Mark Allen Smith again with us on Witch Talk. It's just an amazing thing. How are you, Mark? I'm really good, Carol. How are you? I'm I'm just fantastic. I'm just wonderful. Uh, your your video is kind of like uh, going, but not really. So we're just waiting a little bit. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so um, this is uh, uh, the second time that we actually did uh, the third time. This is the third time. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Here you are. <laughs> yes, we do. We do see you. So uh, this is very interesting because this is the third time that you are on Witch Talk. Um, the first one was with uh, uh, the Queen of Hell, and the second one was the Red King. Um, and and we have absolutely amazing things to tell people and to reveal about these things. But you know, um, we really want to know a little bit more about this. And again, this is a new medium. This is a new thing. This is new a new witch talk show. Uh, we want to really go and 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 grab everything that we talked about, kind of in a summary 
uh, if you will, of, of all yep. of the yep. things that we talked about before. <laughs> okay, so we have this fantastic book. Um, the first one was called Queen of Hell. It was uh. edited by Is- Ixassar, and it's absolutely amazing. Now, tell us a little bit more about the story of this and how this came about. I mean, the, there is, the, you know, how did you begin to... Uh, really write this book this first one the first one that is it's just the beginning for for many many more but we just wanted to know this first one how did you come about um, writing it we know how began really um, obviously anyone who's sort of looked me up a little bit or, or who has read the books understands and knows that it's something that's been there throughout my life um, mm-hmm. into through the mundane life and and when I say something, I'm talking about a cafe and company. Um, my child wasn't really aware of so much who and what she was, just that she was there at um, serious moments, irrelevant moments. Um, throughout the military, um, I practiced a lot, but I kept it uh, quiet, as you do in something like the parachute regiment. Mm-hmm. And then in later life, when I came here, um, and really started accelerating the practice in Spain, where I live here now, I have more time. Uh, I began devoting more of myself. Um, obviously, being a devotee and being a practitioner, I had other things going on in my life, a work, military career. Here, it all began to come to a head, which was Hakate steering it and bringing it to this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started to write, and it happened through um, another publisher. I was purchasing a book, and they asked me, you know, um, do you have any of your own written material? And I said, well, I've only I have volumes and volumes of my own work, but not much in the way of sort of pre-purchased books. Yeah. You know, I buy select books, and then now I hardly buy any books because I don't, I don't have the time to, to read other people's material, which is the only thing that I miss, but I digress. And so I put something forward, which was an overview to the case of my work with the Cathy and my life and how she had affected it, um, how she had... Um, Kept it continuing, shall we say, through a certain um, after service was, mm-hmm. and had, had steered it, um, which the essay in itself was a part of that process because it, it began the evolution of the writing process, and, and from that spawned other essays. And as people began to take interest, I was getting tremendous possession work, tremendous channeling work. Mm-hmm. And it had been in my heart, um, put there by her cafe, and certainly in my head for several years to write a book that was based on my experiences with the Cathy, i.e. it was a transformative, um, transmutational work from the point of soul evolution and spiritual evolution, with the ability to weave and, and manifest power as well. Um, I mean, pretty much all of Queen of Hell is, is a transformative work, but there are hexes, there are curses. Um, and as one, uh, as one of you have up about the only thing that you don't find in our, our love spells, which is something that I, I lead to, to life itself. I don't put that in my work. <laughs> but it was, it was a work put forward that would open gateways for people to come across the world in direct contact with the cat And it's the first gateway. Um, and the, the, the writing began to a series of essays. And through that, I realized that, that this is where I was being found, pushed, dragged, and there was an awful lot of transmission carried and an awful lot of, look, you will write this book, you know? Yeah. Um, we can call it will bending. Uh, let's just call it um, very powerful goddess feminine persuasion. Um, tremendous amount of possession. You, you will write this book. This is, this is the book I want you to write. This is how I want it formulated. Now, obviously, when, when a god or a goddess gives you um, what Nolan and Peter would call a, a rough diamond or, or a diamond gnosis. It needs to be polished, it needs to be refined, it needs to go through the editing process. Mm-hmm. And what comes out of the end is, you know, it, it's as good as you make it as the author and the editor and working with Xaxar at the time as the publishers. Queen of Hell is the first gateway. It's, as I say, not a beginner's book, but it's as close as I could or want to bring it to such without making it um, witchcraft and Consultation one and one, which is not what I've been led to achieve by the cafe. And people that, that go to Queen of Hell hopefully will find their own level and their own depth within it. Um, I get people that write to me, my email address is open, 
you can think I ask for people to write us a little bit of introduction about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I'm firing straight into question, I know who I'm talking to. Um, and I get people asking me, you know, about, well, advice about the rights, how shall I do this, and how shall I do that, and what about this, and what about that. And I give them the advice that they need. I don't spoon feed, and I don't hand for other people. So that again, they will find their own level within the book. Yeah. Because the idea of these books is that sooner or later people won't need my books. Sooner or later, sooner or later they won't need me. They will have direct contact at that time. Yeah. Then, then yeah. Yeah. So if, if, if they're working with the if they're working with Lucifer, um, there's a lot of work with Belial uh, based on the books, um, and another entity that will become um, more logged in one, uh, an entity that's been lost for thousands of years, that's going to surface in the third book, but basically working with them, uh, you don't really need someone like me, that the books are gateways, the door is yeah, something to, to be kept yeah, yeah. Mark, can I ask you to go on uh, sound only now? I will put yeah. you on. I will put you on um, the the other thing because people are saying, you know, it's very difficult to actually <laughs> listen to him because he's going very, very kind of like spotty on the sound. Now, um, this this is great. Okay, so now better. that that's better. Um, um, this is an absolutely amazing book. It, it it's really a, uh, an amazing uh, tome. I mean, it's it's absolutely very uh, the quality of the tome. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you have uh, you know it's really well done. The binding is absolutely gorgeous. It's really great, and it's assist. I, it, would you think that this would be? I mean, would you say that this is the introduction? Yes. To the system. The queen queen of hell is the introduction to the system. Now, I, I do get asked by people, and I know you've asked me in the past, Carrigan, yes. can, can, you, can you integrate this? Um, the answer to that, and I'm not sitting on the fence, is it depends on what you're doing yourself and what level you're at and who you are. A gentleman who, um, he, he did a review of Queen of Hell, a gentleman called Richard Dirks, and he's an American chap, and I, I read his blog because he looks at both the very lighter sides and the very darker sides, which to me gives him a very good balance of his own power. And he did a review of Queen of Hell impromptu off his own back. So I sent him a copy of The Red King and said, you know, would you like to read this? If you would, I'll send it to you. All I ask is that it's gloves off and you say what you feel. There are no it's put some memories from me. See what you think of the work. And, and one of the things that he reviewed was that he, he actually tried to integrate some of it into his own personal system. and suffered a, a, a quite a bad actual backlash that left him out of sports for a week or so. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the system that you're using. Queen of Hell is um, open door, but there are rituals within it that, that well, some people will want to begin at the very beginning and they will want to initiate themselves with the right of the torchbearer. Some people will come along, have been doing for a long time, the work appeals to them, the book pulls them, the cat draws them to the book and through the book. And so they're going to walk into something like the Toad Rite, or perhaps even the Phoenix Rite, um, which is an uh, incredibly powerful, very, very powerful ritual of transformation that, to put it in Kabbalistic terms, will catapult you directly up the dark side of the middle pillar. Yes. Okay, and it'll take you to the crown. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a very rapid journey, but uh, perhaps more about that later. So people can jump in at those levels, can step in, they will find their own level. But I do also get people regarding, say, The Red King, which is the, the second volume. Now, a lot of the work in The Red King, if you follow the path of flame that weaves itself through all of these books, which is basically the path of self-deification, it's the self-empowering of the soul to take something that is removed from the wheel of um, incarnate destiny, yeah. and that is evolved more powerful being that is therefore allowed to to receive more power to receive more knowledge through transmutational um, progressive works and it, it goes through all three books um, and whereas a lot of people speak about say the the crowns of divinity the precious stones the, the elements that when fused together will take the soul beyond the immortal human soul to something that is self deified and again I'd like to point out that is something that is just the tip of the iceberg. It's the beginning. It's certainly not the end of something sitting on a throne as such. But for people that want to follow that, mm -hmm. then they would need to 
to follow the path of learning through all of the books. But I do get people writing to me that are incredibly powerfully drawn to Lucifer, and there are rituals um, in the Red King that it openly states, you know, if you are not initiated, if you do not already have a patron and you perform this, then Lucifer will claim you as his own. And one young gentleman wrote to me and he said, you know, this is what I've done, this is the, the level that I'm at, this is what I'm looking to do. What's your advice on this? Can I do this? And the answer to him was yes. Because the more I wrote to him, the more I emailed, the more I could feel him and feel where it would lead him. And with a lot of people, I feel the effects that it's going to have on them. My only reservation is that I won't tell them exactly, uh, and I don't always know exactly, what effect that I have, that I will have, the 100% effect. Some people want to know everything's going to happen before they'll do it, and, and that's, that's not the ethos of what we're about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's their own personal path. Yeah. So yeah. there's that aspect to it. So yes, it, it is an open door, and it is progressive as such. It's designed to be, I believe, but what I've been given is, is a full system. And I have. I have walked the path and, and performed the rituals through the books. Uh, and the, to answer in, in advance, the people that are going to ask about the cursing rites, a lot of the cursing rites in there, if you look in between the lines, yes, the cursing rites have been performed within the books, but also you can take that and you can source it around, you can, you can build talismans and charms, and you can also, with some of the, the blackest, and when I say black, I mean the nastiest, the cursing rites, particularly in the Red King, yep. you can remove them from the souls of other people that have been inflicted with these things. So there's, there is a, um, a dual aspect of why this knowledge is in there as well. Well, these two, well, first of all, let, let, let's let's just <laughs> talk about Queen of Hell, because it's in itself, okay. it's just a tome <laughs> of precious knowledge. Um, and we have to say, Mark, that, you know, you mm -hmm. are... Um, you are you are a vehicle through which you know the gods are spoken, and and you do you do put in in in, in the form of a book, um, slash books, um, all of this knowledge, and it's a system in itself. It's absolutely amazing, very beautiful. It could be a nutcase, right? It could be like some derange of a guy that would be like completely mad and absolutely out of it. It's really not because you know there's a lot of people like that. Let me just say that. <laughs> but you know it's not. It's very structured, very well you know done, and it's absolutely amazing. The revel. I mean, when you read the books, and this is the thing for me, you just say, "Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah." So it's, it all makes sense. It's absolutely. It's almost like a chain of things. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's kind of like a thing that goes and, and really forms before your eyes and it really makes sense. So it's not really some kind of like made up kind of, you know, there's a lot of things like that and we know that they are published. Uh, so why be shy about it? I mean, we can say that they are. Um, but this is really precious knowledge that comes to, I mean, you serve as a vehicle um, you know, um, to to the knowledge and gnosis of, of, of Ecate and Lucifer. Now, the first book, as you said, and we talked about this, it's very beautiful. You have the book, and then you have something that it's called the Book of the Inner Sanctum. The Sanctum, yes. Yeah. And we talked about this in the first interview that we had. And this particular part of the book, it's absolutely amazing because it goes into some very deep uh, gnosis and, and, and knowledge. Now, can you talk a little bit more about, I mean, before that, it's the, whole, it's the system. It's explaining what it is. It's explaining, you know, you, you know, it's the initiations. It's the gnosis of it. It's all of that. But then you have this book of the inner sanctum. Now, what is the book of the inner sanctum? The Book of the Inner Sanctum is basically where the path of flame uh, really ignites. That is not to take anything away from the earlier part of the book, but again, we need to tell the structure so that people will find their own level in it. And, and for people, that there are, there are a lot of powerful, advanced people out there uh, that, that have helped in, in other formats or in other ways perform the rituals uh, and have vast experience of, of the rituals that early on in Queen of Hell. This is the gateway where the path of flame 
really begins. And these rituals are powerful transmutational rituals. They will change you. And what changes at the soul, as we know, affects the mundane life. Because the soul gives, you know, life itself to the incarnate form. What happens at the soul, which is why curses are, are a proper curse, is aimed deeply and planted and stuck in and snapped off at the soul because that will really affect the, um, the incarnate form, as will the positive sides of the craft, the transformation and the spiritual elevation. And that's where these rituals are aimed because they are performed both on the physical plane through physical ritual and uh, bilocationally upon the inner planes by subtle bodies that are higher form of the soul itself and have rituals such as the Legion of Night. Now, this is a prime example of something that can be swung in the direction. The Legion of Night is basically a very, very ancient set of familiars and it's something that is attained through the path of the pact. You make a pact with Lucifer. Um, and depending on your path, depending, depending if you get granted um, these entities, um, they will ensorcel themselves around you, they will swarm around you. Uh, this, at first sense, they're quite an intimidating set of beings, dark and shadowy and ophidian in nature, and they hiss. I mean, they actually hiss when, when the gateways are opening, and they're coming towards you. But they are above the protection and the soul transformation because they actually become part of you, albeit separate entities as well. After that, in later works, I mean, I believe the ritual for many people, they know it, it began perhaps before even ten other times. It's a very old ritual that triggers the crossing of the abyss. Um, so I shall leave that there for now um, and step forward to the Phoenix Rite, which is simply the most powerful ritual of including hell. For someone to perform the right of the phoenix and call the magical fire of the gods, I would recommend this song in the Legion of Night first because these entities stabilize the path of the soul. Yeah. Or they leave you when you cross the abyss by the point you, you face that alone. But they stabilize you before, they stabilize you after. They're not the only ones that are there, but they make a huge difference. Perhaps more so, although they work at the soul level, they make a huge difference for the Monday in form because the, the right of the phoenix Oh, I think we lost Mark. Did we lost Mark? Yes, we did. Okay. Next, I might speak personally. Oh, we you did. Perform it and you might say, well, you know, Mark, I didn't actually think that bad because I Mark, um, can I ask you uh, to give you... Uh, let, let me just ask Mark to give us his phone number. Um, yeah, so we have a phone number... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see uh, if we can just call him on 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 the phone number because we just lost him completely. So um, uh, I have to tell you that these books are actually uh, numbered. They I don't know. I mean, he might wanted to tell us a little bit more about. Hello. Okay, hi. Uh, let me just call you. It's better that way. <laughs> So this is, okay. tell me one thing, this is Spain, right? Yes. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just see if we can call you on the phone. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going um, to just hang up here and call you on the phone, okay? Okay, try that. I'm going to go and stand by the window where the reception's good, all right? Okay, good, good. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Bye. Bye. Um, so these books are actually books that are, um, um, how should I say numbered? So th sometimes you don't really can't you can't really have them uh, as you you want it to have them because you know some of them are just you know um, already uh, done. I mean they they they're just past you know <laughs> anything. Uh, let's see if we can uh, call him. They're already purchased, uh, so you don't you can't really have anything like that. Well, so Spain. Let me see Spain, Spain, Spain. Where is Spain? Spain, here we are. We're going to call him on the phone and see if he's if he can, you know. Oops, no, this is not what it is. So this is um it's not what it is. Let me see if it is uh, just this number. Sorry guys, but this happens sometimes. So here we are. Um let's see if it works. 
okay. Uh, Mer Mercury retrograde. People are saying Mercury retrograde. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, here we are. Hello. Hello. Here we are again. Hello. <laughs> can, can you, is this better reception? Oh, this is absolutely marvelous. Because, you know, Skype is really kind of cutting you. And yeah. we lost a lot of things because we don't really can't you, oh, we can't okay. hear Sorry. you know and no it's fine it's fine it's yeah. fine no it's absolutely amazing so now we have you on Fantastic. the phone <laughs> so oh, you, you got me my phone's plugged in I'm charged up and I'm standing in the dark I mean not that you would see but it's it's a good effect. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> okay, so what we were talking about the, the Queen of Hell, and we were talking yeah. about the Inner Sanctum um, book, the Book of Inner Sanctum. Yeah. And one of the things that we have in this book, it's something that it's called The Sacred Rite of the Waters of the Moon, yeah. um, which we talked about in the in the first you know interview that we had with you. Yeah. And it was absolutely amazing. It's, it's an amazing thing. And, and I just wanted to know, what is it? I mean, I want you to explain what what is it, and and you know why is it important. Well, the sacred rite of the waters of the moon was uh, what some practitioners of traditional witchcraft would call the original pact with um, the devil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, th there are euphemisms that that are used where they don't perhaps use the, the, the word the devil. There there are some that are, as it was presented um, to myself. It's basically. Traditionally, it's the crucifixion of a toad, um, and there are, there are many different um, formats of this. Uh, it's strung to a blackthorn bush, uh, it's then placed in an ant hill, the ants strip it clean, etc. I have to point out that although I am, um, and I don't know if I'm going to lose a lot of friends saying this, <laughs> my craft is very, very primal. I am not opposed to the path of sacrifice, as will be explained perhaps in later volumes, but... I have to be openly honest, my path of the toad right was not the path of sacrifice. Okay? <coughs> mm -hmm. I found a recently killed toad. I, I passed a beautiful, big, shining leatherback, or Spain's equivalent. I mean, these guys are bigger than my outstretched fingers on the palm of my hand. They're huge. <laughs> At a crossroads, on my way back in, unfortunately, he had just met his demise. Mm -hmm. And I just knew. I mean, I could feel it. My, my face was tingling, my, my, my legs and my hands were tingling. And so, rather than waste what was just gone, mm -hmm. I took him there and then. And because I knew at the time, through my own work with the catty, that the toad ritual for me was, was imminent. It was very much a case of, look, you, you, we want you to go through this. You're going to go through this so you can experience this. You will receive the gifts. You will receive the, the gnosis and the power. You will certainly receive the journey that it initiates. Mm -hmm. But also, you're going to reinterpret this you're going to put it forward for other people i mean it's this is an ancient ritual mm -hmm. you know they did it in medieval times absolutely the yeah. i believe did it the templars performed this and i don't know if many people know that but they were into that and so it's once you have your bones that have been uh, stripped etc it's the casting of the bones upon the full moon into uh, a stream of running water mm -hmm. there are various prayers uh, for me, for my ritual, there were evocations uh, and callings that were necessary uh, of Belial, Lucifer, and Tecate. And the one bone that resists the, the current of the water is, is the bone that you must seize. Okay. But this is the thing that I, I'm asking you, because um, some people are very skeptic about these things, and I'm I'm just playing the devil's ad advocate. Um, That's fine. Does it's does it really does it really go against the stream? My bone did not go flying upstream. What it did was it sank halfway between the bottom and the top, and it bobbed around there and spun, and it refused to. All the other bones went past me. Now, we're yeah. not talking Niagara Falls here. You, you have to be a little bit practical about this. Other people may uh, phone in and say, look, well, actually, I, I said it a different way. But it needs to be a stream of flowing water where there is resistance, where there is a current. If your bone sinks, if your bone does go in the opposite direction mine just stayed in front of me one bone and spun and you know i'm not going to stand here and say that the, the ritual was picture perfect i saw the bone spinning and i snatched it yeah because that's what you're supposed to do i yeah. snatched it before there was distractions i could feel energy i could hear things um but i didn't i didn't feel whipping of bushes as, as has been described in, in other rites i heard hissing and air currents around me when I snatched the bone the biggest thing after my confirmation 
yeah. of what I'd done and what I'd undertaken because I was stood in the river at the time. I didn't stand at the side of it. There are many different methods and approaches. I followed what I was given by Hecate in deep possession was to get in the water because it symbolizes wading into the abyss and taking the leap in, into the nothing. And when I snatched the bone, the biggest thing, and I was actually shy about putting this in the book at the time because I thought, well, I'd rather people attended the right than were put off by huge graphic imagery. But when I looked up at the full moon, there was an absolute perfect circle of, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say light, I wouldn't say cloud, it was a formation. Mm -hmm. But it gave the path of the sun. It gave the path of flame through the moon. It was the image of the sun, the dot with the circle around it, basically, mm -hmm. it was made of the full moon. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was a, that's a very, very powerful symbolism because it was sculpted, it was perfect. We're not, we're not talking Mark looking into the sky and making things fit because that would be nice. We're talking looking into the sky and thinking, oh, wow, okay, all right. <laughs> but at that point, you take notice of it, yeah. and there are other things to do. There are other pe the night doesn't end there, and so you continue. The toad rites, what a lot of people miss is that it's symbolism. Yes, there is an inversion there uh, to free people from past life uh, dogma of whatever particular uh, man-made faith, shall we say. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm not being politically correct. I could say Christian, but, uh, you know, um, there are others. Faiths of control, the path of freedom, sometimes we need a little bit of inversion. But the biggest thing about the toad rite is not that. It actually does initiate the crossing of the abyss. Yes. Okay? And there's where a lot of the the, um, the euphemisms and mythology, a lot of the descriptions come from, but it gives a different path of power than, say, the phoenix. Okay? The toad rite is done through the path of the pact, and it, it, it's a slower-paced rite. Now, when the energy comes, when the testing comes, yeah, it can be very tenuous for some people, but you get more of... The best way to describe this would be you get more of the traditional witchcraft feel and current and the gifts and the benefits that come upon successful completion of the right, the experiences. Mm -hmm. Whereas the phoenix, which also initiates crossing the abyss, is a little bit like being strapped to a NASA rocket. Mm -hmm. And it's a different effect entirely, but it also brings other benefits, other powers, other gnosis. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's more of a... Uh, it's more geared towards um, the cosmic mind aspect of the path of flame mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of its trajectory. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. but the phoenix takes you further than mm -hmm. the toad right. If you were to, and I'm not a kabbalist, but I use the tree to explain things as regards the path of universal power and the soul power within the universe to people. So if you would look at the tree of night, for instance, mm -hmm. the phoenix will take you higher into the realm of Thalmiel. It will take you higher into that particular godhead because when you perform the rite of the phoenix, you break what is essentially a ceremonial, magical circle in the presence of the physically manifested and evoked Hecate and Lucifer. Mm -hmm. You then invite them into the soul and you step back into the circle. And the breaking of the circle is a very, very ancient and powerful formula, uh, hence uh, the, the traumatic effects. But the end result of soul evolution is... is Beautiful. It's 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 potent. It's potent. Now now let l let me um uh, while I was dialing you and you know yeah. asking you for the phone number and all of that, uh -huh. um I was telling people that you know these are really kind of a very um how should I say rare books? Uh, we can yeah. say that right. Um they are numbered. Say that because they won't be repub they won't they be republished. republished. Yes, that's that's what they it is. There will be no second edition of the books. It's um, not. I mean, these these books are what I do, Carradine, and uh, I I produce through my work at, at this rate, and this is me going flat out because bearing in mind it's not all writing and publishing. Um, I have an eight day spell at the Forest Temple uh, sometime over the next few months, so I won't specify when, and that's going to be incredibly intense. Um, and I do things like that to bring this knowledge back. But at this pace, at this moment in time, I bring out one book per year. What I will never do, because this was the directive I was given by Hecate, was I will not um, make a second edition. There will be no reprint of, of the book as such. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, there are 999 for a reason. It's what Hecate and Lucifer wants, and I'm not going to argue with her. Um, no, no, no. We don't. 
I don't want no. to argue with them. No, 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 no. I'm, now, I'm, I'm no, no, absolutely. Now, the thing is, um, I, I, I find this, these books. I mean, we, we're we're going to talk about primal primal craft. You're going yep. to to um, to make a publisher just for your books so we're not talking yeah. about publishing other people's books or whatever no. primal craft will be your your editor it will be your publisher um, just okay. for your work um, and and um, there's a third no we're, we're going to talk about the Red King but there is a third yeah. book coming um, and yeah. and and it, it, you know you can't reveal the name of the book it's it's after so we have Queen of Hell the Red King yeah. and then yeah. after that it's called the Forbidden Wisdom of Belial. There is a full title to it, and the full title I will release at the latter part of this year. Mm -hmm. The Forbidden Wisdom of Belial is the subtitle, okay? Yes. It's it's part of the title, but again, it's just part of the process for me. I'll release the full title la later in the year, which is the full title is part of the formula of what is actually contained within the book, a, a necessary uh, rite of passage that allows one to, to walk through the deeper gateways which go beyond the Red King. Mm -hmm. What is contained in the book is, is um, basically the really hidden stuff, the stuff that will take the soul. So because we read so much about it, there's, there's a lot of speculation. This is the path that will actually take people to the completion of the attainment of the three great crowns of divinity. Mm -hmm. It will allow them self-deification. It will allow them to open even deeper gateways again, which, as I said, this is only the tip of the iceberg. But it's the really hidden stuff. It's a lot of it's very powerful and dangerous stuff. Uh, again, it's a process of advancement. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're rock climbing, you don't go straight to K2. You know, you start yeah. on the local hill. Yeah. And that's the craft. The craft, as we all know, is is the same, but it does contain um, a different caliber of material. To the previous two books and that is not taking anything away from the material and the rituals and the energy that is in Queen of Hell or the Red King but it is the hidden stuff and it is the forbidden wisdom of Belial for a reason and it's you know it's to be released to people and it's like giving someone anything mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we're all big boys and girls if someone receives the book then you know, people understand this work, they know about this work, it, it's up to them how they handle it and how they approach it, which is why I leave my email address out there, mm -hmm. because, you know, if people need assistance... Absolutely. That's, where, Absolutely. You know, but that, that's what Primal Craft is for. Um, now that it's been formed as a publishing house, it's solely uh, to release this work. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you said, no, I, I, won't, um, I won't be released, I won't be publishing anybody else's material not for any other reason um, other than I don't have the time and this is dedicated solely to the work of, of the Tridents and what will become known as the Four Pillars of Fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now tell me one thing, uh, uh, there is a question on the chat room, why nine, 999 copies specifically? Okay, 999 was the number given to me by the card today, but for people that, that sort of want to explore uh, the Gematria, of it, if you look at the three 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 and the six six six, okay, not not the classical Christian <laughs> interpretations of them, but the actual yeah. interpretations, which I'm sure people understand, then we're looking at opening, standing at the threshold of the gate of knowledge. Then we're then looking at going through it, okay, and we're looking at perhaps the formula of creation, or certainly the seeding of the soul of man into the first race into the inner planes with that number, and that's a very very there are formula coming out in the third book that will allow people to open um, and for the process of soul transmutation invert the gate of creation for themselves solely okay and then you have 999 which is the, the next step again Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Allen Smith directly on Witch Talk again. This is the third time that we have here he, uh, him here, and it's absolutely amazing. You know, I I just I can't even. I mean, you were. Let me just go. I'm a little bit nostalgic today, so let's just go back a little bit. Okay. Uh, you were actually recommended by Sarita Dieste. That's and right, so do you remember yeah. that? Um, yeah. And it was because of the uh, the the rites of her sacred fires 
that you yes. were in a collective interview uh, with uh, Marjan, Marjan Rose and 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 uh, other people. Yes. Brown no, yeah, and, and, yeah, and Sarita. So we were all together, and then I, th I, I just I talked to you, and I said, you know, we we really have to have you on Witch Talk, and here we are, third, third, third show. This yes. is the third show. Now, tell me, there is fifteen in this number. There's fifteen. Uh, on this number of things that you have to do, w w can you tell us a little bit more about about the one five number? Are we talking about the number of years? Absolutely, we are. Books? Yep. Okay, it's it, it's subject to fluctuation. When I say fifteen, I it, it's not like I'm looking to do anything else. This this for me, I've come home. Okay, mm -hmm. the the thirteen years in the parachute regiment, the experiences that I've had, the the ups, the downs, the knocks. They've all prepared me for this work, okay? And mm -hmm. yes, I, I mean, I was performing ritual at, at 14, as many people were, but for this intensity of this work and the forest temple and the things that I do now, everything in my life has brought me to this point. But out of curiosity, I, I'm a planner. I'm a Capricorn, okay? Mm -hmm. So in possession work, it, uh, a little directive from goes a long way. Yeah. And I was... I've got an awful lot of material that uh, that I've worked that is still to be put forth, and I've got an awful lot of material that I still have to work, rituals and transformations to go through, gateways to walk through, things to explore, to bring back for other people. Because in, anyone who's read my work knows that I don't just write rituals that go, stand here, say this, do that. I try to give someone a picture of what you're going to see, okay, but bearing in mind everyone's path. Whoops. We lost him again. We're going to call him again. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Well, this is the website, let me just say to you, website of um, Mark Allen Smith. It's www.primalcraft.com and that's P-R-I-M-A-L-C-R-A-F-T dot com. Um, you know, and it's it's a wonderful and you, you wonderful website, and you can have like a lot of things here. I mean, you have the books, the forthcoming. This is what we are um, actually uh, uh, kind of like. You know, uh, we're we're actually on on this website. We're we're actually showing you what you can expect on 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 this particular website. It's absolutely amazing. Sorry my Skype just went off so um, this is absolutely amazing and it's it's something that really uh, oh no let's see Mobile phone, oh, eh? wait a minute uh, <laughs> switch to normal oh here we are uh, I think that we are